representing the 25 to 28 foot class in the bay boat category. The Nautic Star 265 XTS has an overall length of 26 feet 2 inches, a beam of 9 feet, and a max horsepower rating of 350. Built for a comfortable and dry ride both inside and outside of the inlet, she has a draft of 14 inches, a dead rise of 16 degrees, a dry weight of 4,200 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 74 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. George, we're here on the Nautic Star 265 XTS. That stands for Extreme Tournament Series. This is an extreme bay boat. It's a 26 by nine foot bay boat, but it's all bay boat. It is, it's big, and oh, by the way, it handles great offshore. I ran it offshore this morning, loved it. But that's not where its roots are. Its roots are back inshore. This boat has a bunch of storage for gear. Let's have a look at some of it. George, I'll tell you what, you can call this a bay boat and you're dead on right. It is the picture of a bay boat. Yeah, and you had it offshore today, Rick. I mean, this is a very offshore capable boat. And where they build it, I mean, the people are gonna run to the rigs and the gulf. I mean, they'll take the boat offshore. They cater to a few different kinds of people. Not everybody's gonna get off the boat and wade. You know, some people wanna get on the back of the platform or up on the front of the boat and walk around and cast. You've got two big casting surfaces to do that. They've got a really deep gutter mold. All these hatches, incidentally, they all connect to one place. They're not draining into a hole through a tube. But the key thing is it's really deep. You're definitely gonna keep your gear dry. Now let's talk about these boxes. You've got two lockable rod storage compartments right here on both sides of the boat. You've got another box right here to put stuff in and your anchor box, everything puts away on this really big casting surface. They're using every bit of that space. First off, you know I'm a fan of the step. I don't want to go all the way up and all the way down 25 times a day. I like that mid-range step. You can tell when you're dealing with a quality bay boat because it's already pre-rigged for its trolling motor and it's got a switch up here where you can trim and tilt the motor from the bow of the boat. Rick, you're right. This boat is absolutely designed with the fishermen in mind. Actually, one of the three live wells on this boat is right here under the seat. Here's a 13 gallon bait well, you can put 10 dozen in there and never have to go to the back of the He's boat. He's got his own place, but let me show you the coolest thing I've seen in a while. We've seen all kinds of windshields. Check this one out. Here it's a solid windshield. It'll fold down to be a half windshield that is anchored by powerful magnets so you won't have any bounce and it slides out all the way to have no windshield. That's a really neat feature, Rick. I mean, we really appreciate stuff like that down here in this Florida heat. Hey, let's move back to the center of the boat here and take a look at some of this stuff here. You can spend more money on a 26-foot bay boat than you would this boat, but I challenge you to find one bit of fit and finish that would show you why another boat's more expensive. The power assist steering combined with this very comfortable helm that you can either sit down or stand up, it's one of the things that will make you so much less tired at the end of the day, but you won't know why. You like this top. You know, this has become a thing for me, and I love this counter shading. When they paint the bottom of the top, you know, a darker color, like a gray or light blue, is good. It sucks up a lot of the light, but this green is really easy on the eyes. This particular boat, I'm really fond of the green. You got room here for two 12-inch screens. Now, this console looks a little small, but don't be deceived. That's because the D-tubing fits into it and it doesn't stick out as far, leaving you all this room. And your console goes all the way down to the bottom of the hull. Do you understand what I'm saying? Another thing, I said there were three live wells on the boat. The second one is right here. Let's take a walk back here and have a look at it. Rick, you know how much of a fan I am of live bait fishing? And as I said, this boat's got three live wells. There's a 21 gallon live well right here. But even better, especially for those days when you go offshore, or if you need a release well, is a 43-gallon live well below your feet there in the deck. Everybody needs seating across the back back here, and they've done a great job of making them individual. There's storage space, there's tackle trays that fit underneath these two, and there's also a spot for a five-gallon bucket for your cast net that fits down below, completely below the deck there. So once again, we're using all this space for storage. Rick, not only is the compartment here molded to fit a Yeti cooler, but they actually throw the cooler in there with the boat. It comes with a Yeti. Two things that really come in handy. One of them is a jack plate, also standard on this boat. The other thing's a power pole. This boat's got one. It's a great tool to use for getting anchored out. It really does make a difference how many fish you're gonna catch in shallow water. I gotta tell you, we've looked at an awful lot of bay boats. This Nautic Star 265 XTS, that's gotta be really close to the top of the food chain, George. It just does a lot of things very well.